Hello and welcome. I'm Alex Hernandez and you're listening to the Lesson of the Wild Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the outdoors man or woman. Join me, your host, as I take on new adventures, talk to interesting people, and answer any questions you may have on order to make you a better hunter, fisherman, backpacker, cook, or conservationist. In this episode, I'm going to go over the fundamentals to scouting for whitetail deer during the summer. Now, if you're like me and you don't have a lot of confidence in your scouting abilities, I think the information I've gathered here will really allow us to put our best foot forward when it comes to the season and really get out there with some confidence. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoy. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Like the intro said, today we're going to be talking about scouting for white-tailed deer. Uh, I don't know about your state, but my state... Archery season comes up here in September, which I'm pretty pumped about, and that runs through about January, maybe a little mid-January to late January, I'm not quite sure. And then firearm season is in November, so pretty stoked about that. Make sure to check your state regulations and laws before you you go out, but uh, I'm real pumped. Um, This episode, I really kind of was just trying to get organized for my scouting season. Like I said... Before, I'm not super confident in my scouting abilities. I've really, really had it done for me for the past years of hunting because most places I go are private land and, you know, the owner or my friends really have done most of the work for me and kind of have everything organized and I kind of just show up and wait, which is a luxury, don't get me wrong, but any excuse to be in the woods is a good one. So I'm going to try to really step up my scouting game this year and the I really just wanted to get a lot of the information I've accumulated over the years and uh, learn some new stuff and kind of share it with you guys. So that being said, if I say something today and you're like, man, that's a dumb idea, write in, let me know, lessonsofthewild at gmail.com or Instagram, you know, lessons of the wild with underscores in between. Give us a follow. Um, yeah. So before we get started here, I've kind of gone through some resources that I listened to and watched and I figured would be a good of good value to you guys uh, before you get out there, especially if you've never done this before. So the first one is the Wired to Hunt podcast and YouTube channel, uh, specifically podcast episode number 17, Summer Scouting Techniques for Big Bucks. Uh, I think that's a good episode to learn. And Mark, Mark Kenyon hosts the podcast. He, uh, he kind of just... He focuses on hunting big bucks. He's one a whitetail guy through and through and has hunted a lot, so he really focuses on taking out mature animals. So if you're looking to get your first whitetail deer, that might not be the most amazing podcast for you because he talks a lot of really buck sensitive, you know, information and habits what they're doing. But if you're just trying to get a deer, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of just ignore. Um, a more appropriate resource would be his YouTube channel, How to Kill Your First Deer, How to Kill Your First Deer, and it's public land scouting and stuff like that, and it's really a a better resource for your first timers out there. Um, Another good resource is my buddy Jacob Kuhn's Whitetail 101 course on udemy.com, that's U-D-E-M-Y dot com. Um, It's a really awesome course, and he has a coupon code, all caps, LESSON, L-E-S-S-O-N, uh, I don't know if that coupon coupon code's still active, but he was a boss and gave it to me when we did our podcast, and it's been a while, but I'm sure if it's in there, he'll give you a discount, okay? Um, really good course, covers a lot of stuff, covers a lot of stuff about hunting in general, so again, if it's your first season, really good resource for you to listen to. Um, some couple things I want you to look up, um, you can look this up before or after the podcast, it would be valuable if you did it before, so if you wanted to pause and, you know look up some YouTube videos on these things, it would be a value. Uh, the first thing is thermals uh, for hunting, which are just changes in wind direction due to time and day shift and heat and all this jazz. Um, I'll kind of talk about that a little more, but it'll be a lot less confusing if you uh, figure out the definition of it and really learn about it. Like, there's plenty of YouTube channels that have done videos on this, so learn it, love it, live it. Um, also whitetail rubs and scrapes, just to kind of get an idea what those are and the differences and kind of things to look for. Um, and then how to read, read a topo- 
bleh, how to read a topographical map, a topo map. Um, that's really handy, and it'll serve you well. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, my first, my first bit of advice, and I am, I literally just am doing this for the first time this season. So I want you all to join with me, just so we can all really keep data. Uh, is to get a hunting journal. I literally just picked mine up at Barnes and Noble, uh, and which we actually still have a Barnes and Noble by my work, so I was able to grab that, which is cool. Um, and I'm going to keep track of everything. I'm going to keep track of my hunts, my scouting, what I see, what I put out. You know, just keep a lot of data if I can. And time of day, wind direction, weather, if there is a barometric pressure change, etc. As much data as I can accumulate and see what trends I see, if any. Uh, I might even get into plotting stuff on a data chart, but that's some nerd level stuff that I am just not there yet. So we'll see. Maybe when I have more time, but I think it's valuable. And if you're a data guy, like a lot of my friends are, you know, it might be worth your time doing. Um, yeah, so I think that'll be a valuable thing if you do it with me. Um, the way I'm going to present the rest of this is kind of I'm just going to run you through my plan, okay? And if you have any questions or if you need me to clarify anything or you have stuff to add that I don't cover or you think would be valuable for me or anyone else to do, please, again, write in, let us know. So the first thing I'm going to do is e-scouting. So I have a couple spots picked out which you need to have permission to go to or have public land spots that you're interested in. Uh, just a general area. Like I have public land access in these few areas, so I'm going to see from there, I'm going to narrow it down with some further things. So I'm going to, one, first thing I'm going to do is look at a map. And the maps I like to use are Google Earth, Google Maps, and Onyx Maps. Now, Onyx is wonderful because you can see boundaries really, really well. They have a good topographical map, etc. Google Earth is really good because you can kind of see different time changes as far as time of the year so if I can if the data is available I'll probably look more towards the dates I'm looking to hunt kind of see what the trees are looking like see if I can see hardwoods versus pine trees and stuff like that because pine needles don't fall so I'll need areas to put a tree stand where I can shoot and if there's a bunch of pine trees I'm not going to be able to see stuff like that I'm also going to be looking for food sources water sources and favorable topography. Now that's where that topo map reading will come in. Uh, and what is favorable topography? So I'm looking kind of for variance in grade. I'm looking for hills, I'm looking for benches and all these things that would allow a deer to use their number one scent which is smell effectively. So if you know what thermals are now, let's say you do, so as the day warms up, air starts to move up and it will rise. So in mid-afternoon, the deer is going to be sitting at the top of the hill if he can, where his the wind's coming to him. He's smelling anything that's coming his or her way, and they're ready. Um, in the mornings when things are cool, they'll be lower, where the, the wind will kind of be pushing down if there's not a very strong wind pushing everything one way. So they're going to be playing a wind, which is something that you need to be ready for day by day but in general on a calm day that's kind of where I'm going to be looking um, so I'm looking for water first thing I'm looking for is water um, and kind of seeing in proximity to where those things are okay and then I'm comparing it with the topography on probably Onyx or Google Earth if I can in Google Maps and seeing if I can't see anything that would come up to me as like oh if I were using my nose I'd probably sit here and go get water there and come back here alright so that's kind of just my first step I'm not really narrowing anything down I'm kinda of just marking spots like hmm that it looks interesting that looks interesting that looks interesting which I'll do more of I might even make a YouTube video on it just to take you guys through my process so we could do this together and learn together um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at scientific journals to see if I can't find anything on where these deer might be. So um, looking maybe at 
food source studies, uh, maybe looking at um, collaring studies in the area if I can find it, um, stuff like that. And I've never done this before. I just learned about it literally two days ago, uh, thanks to BHA's journal they sent out, which was Boss. So if you're not a member of BHA, become a member. But I'm gonna give this a whirl this year and see what it's like. So I kind of have. I've already kind of picked out some spots on Onyx, but I need to get it again because it was a free, uh, free trial, and I need to just buy it. Uh, I'm gonna go through soon and kind of mark some more spots I want to check out when I have a couple hours on the farm I'm gonna be hunting and on the public land. To that'll be my initial check out, and then I'm gonna kind of cross examine it with any studies I can find, and I'll. See if I can't journal that along with you guys. Maybe, you know, make a YouTube channel, kind of break things down, or even do a separate podcast on the stuff I found. All right? Uh, just to keep you guys up to date and see what I'm seeing, and maybe we could do it together. And if you want to share what you found, or if you have some content that you think would be valuable for other people, let me know. I'll send people to it, and I'll check it out. Um, so from there, all right, so let's say... Let's say I've picked a spot and it's near water. Now I need to kind of find a food source, right? Water is most important because without water you die quicker, right? Um, so food. Deer-like agriculture. That's humongous. So the farm I'm hunting, plenty of agriculture. I'm not so worried about food, more concerned with water. Um, there's also a river, so it spans the whole damn farm, so that makes it a little trickier for me, but... I'm looking for agriculture. I'm looking for oak trees that have acorns. It's hard to see on maps, but if you see hardwoods and no pine trees, like I'm saying, you might have a better chance of deer being in that area. Not all oak trees have acorns every year, so that's kind of more... Le it's less e-scouting, more real scouting. But grasses, all those things. We already talked about topography. Um, looking for hills really looking for a place a deer can go up and bed down looking for bedding areas will look like a good bedding area essentially bedding is where a deer after they eat their ungulates so they they ruminate and they chew cud like a cow would so what a deer will do they'll go eat eat it all in their chambered stomach then go lay down and they have to chew it a second time to really help it digest so i'm kind of looking for those things uh, which you'll need to be doing too. Deer like to be able to be covered but see. So a lot of field edges I've noticed in my hunting experience. If, if you have different information, please let me know. But I've noticed a lot of bedding in field edges. Uh, if you've got boots on the ground, you might be able to see, hey, these grass, this grass area is just flat, and it's because deer have been laying down there. That's where they're going to sleep and rest and do all these things. Okay, so let's say I got my spot now. I know I got, I'm going to try to do like five or six different locations just via e-scouting. See if I can't check them out. Then I'm going to go there. I'm going to physically go when I have time and look for sign. Um, so what is sign? Sign are tracks. Sign are rubs and scrapes like I had you look out. They're poop, scat. Um, and game trails. So I'm looking for all these things. All these things that would indicate, hey, deer are here. And if I turn out to be super lucky and I have like a collaring study and I see that there's a central location these deer are happen to be via this study and it kind of links up to one of my spots. Or honestly, if, it, if I have a study and it's nowhere near any of my spots but it's in a different location, I'm probably going to check the study. As I trust that over myself, so, but I'm looking for these things. I'm looking to see this presence of deer. Um, the closer we get to November, the closer we get to the rut, which is when a deer will go in heat and is ready to mate, um, we'll see these rubs and scrapes more often because that's buck behavior getting ready for the mating season and fighting off other bucks and all this jazz. So I'm looking for those things. Uh, kind of closer to this time of year. I'm probably just going to be looking for poop, looking for prints, you know, see if I don't see any bedding areas, you know, kind of things like that. Um, I'm going to be putting up a trail camera. 
I might get another one this year. They're kind of expensive. Um, but I'm doing that in areas where I think a deer will pass. Um, what's a trail camera? It's a little camera. You, you tie down, sorry for that high-pitched S, uh, that you tie to a tree and hope that a deer comes by and just your camera will capture it. It's a camera trap, essentially. And that'll kind of tell you a lot. But the problem with that is, is one, you can't really check them regularly. And two, when you do go to check them, you're, you're kind of disturbing things. So I don't like... I don't like to rely solely on that, one, because if you get a buck that comes through, that's probably the time he's going to be there. So um, I'm going to be using one of those, maybe another, and just trying to not come in the area too much if I see a lot of sign. But, you know, once or twice before season, and then giving it some time so I'm not scaring away deer, I think it'll be worth it. Um, going to have some binoculars with me as well just so I can really see deer from afar if I need to. Um, and if I can glass and not really move, and I have, let's say I have a high point where I can overlook a lot of area, I'm going to spend time and do that. I'm going to spend time to really just look with my eyes and not my feet, if you get what I'm saying. Because the more we're in the woods, the more we're going to disturb deer, and the more we're going to probably scare off things that we want around when it comes time to hunt. All right. Um, I'm also going to be using a GPS slash Onyx on my phone. Um, so if I do see sign, if I do see significant stuff, I'm going to mark it. I'm going to keep track of that data. I'm going to write it down in my journal like, hey, saw this today, saw this here. But I'm specifically going to mark things that I could get back to. Uh, I'm also going to be kind of looking for potential tree stand locations. Um, or I might use a saddle this year, if you don't know what that is. Google it, but um, I'm also going to be marking those. Like, hey, I saw this sign. Um, I might put a tree stand here. Boom. Mark it down. I got it. Um, a lot of people like to use attractants when it comes to scouting, like mineral licks and things like that, uh, especially in front of trail cameras, like I was talking about earlier. Um, a lot of states are now making that illegal especially on public land, not so much private land, but public land, uh, just because of the spread of CWD. Um, I know people, a lot, of, a lot of people think it's just kind of fear-mongering, which I can see the argument for, but it's just a concerning disease, and if we don't get ahead of it, things could be a problem. So, one, I'm not going to do that this year. Uh, I have done it. I've used bait, and I now have learned a lot of stuff that makes me not want to use an attractant for my cameras. Um, so I'm not going to this year, and that'll be the first time um, I've not used the tractor in a season. So uh, I recommend you do the same. You don't have to, but for sure check your laws so you don't get in trouble. I know in Kentucky it was illegal to have a tractor on public land, so you know don't do that. But if that's something you're concerned about, look up CWD, chronic wasting disease. Um, I think it's something we should be worried about. So I'm not going to use it, but you know different strokes, different folks, do what you want, um, as long as it's legal, if it's legal, I think it's moral here, but yeah, so that's my game plan, uh, nothing too crazy, um, I really think, and I'm really excited about those scientific journals, I'm really hoping to find something really good in my area, probably won't, so with that being said, I think something we all can do this scouting season to help our success is really be patient with ourselves, and Try not to get frustrated when things aren't going our way or a spot we pick just isn't having stuff and you feel like you're wasting time, stuff like that. Because hunting is a process and it's a learning process and it takes a long time. If my arm span is, you know, the time it takes to become an experienced hunter who's amazing, I'm probably at the very first nail. Okay, so, you know... Don't get too stressed. Have fun. That's what we're doing this for, is to be out in the woods and enjoy it. Even a bad day in the woods is better than a good day of work. So let's be patient. Um, another note, don't be too loud in the woods when you're scouting. Okay, don't be gabbing it up with a friend if you go with someone. Don't be rubbing against a bunch of trees, spreading your scent everywhere. You kind of want to be a ninja. You kind of want to be sneaking into their world and seeing where they're at. 
So when it comes hunting season, they don't expect anything. And it's a quick and easy, quick and easy harvest for you. All right, y'all. If you have anything to add to this podcast, please let me know. Please write in lessons the wild at gmail.com or on Instagram. You can DM me lessons of the wild with a bunch of underscores in between. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Take care.